Now let's talk about the second element of a contract, and that is consideration. Consideration is referred to as a bargain for exchange, something of value. It requires each party to change their position, either by promising to do something or forego something they have a right to do. I've written promise for promise here in the words bilateral K. The capital K is shorthand for contract. So a promise for promise might be if I promise to tutor someone in business law once a week and in exchange that person will help walk my six dogs. So we're exchanging two things of value. Consideration must be given by each party to the contract. If only one side is offering something of value, then that is not a binding contract. For example, if I'm thinking of buying a new house and my really rich uncle says, oh sure, I'll loan you, no, not loan you, I'll give you $100,000 to help with the purchase of that house, and then um, he never comes through with the money, that is not a promise that can be enforced in court because I gave nothing in exchange. He promised $100,000 and what did I give? Nothing. So that would not be enforced in court. A contract requires both sides give consideration. Now I said one thing, um, now I said consideration is usually um, both sides giving something, but it could be that someone gives up something, gives up or foregoes a right. For example, if um, Sarah causes a car accident injuring Bob, Bob would have a right to sue. But if Sarah and Bob negotiate a settlement before a lawsuit is filed, Bob will sign the settlement agreement and will be giving up, foregoing the right to file a lawsuit against Sarah. And in exchange, Sarah would most likely pay money. So consideration from Bob would be, I'm giving up my right to file a lawsuit. And from Sarah would be, here is some money. So both sides are giving something of value. They're changing their position. Now please recognize there's another type of contract, not a promise for a promise. There can be a contract that is a promise for an act. And this is called a unilateral contract. Uni being one, so it's one promise for an act in contrast to bilateral, B-I for two, two promises. So what does a promise for an act look like? Commonly, it's a reward contract. Um, I will pay $1,000 to whomever finds my dog and returns him to my house. If you knock on my door and say, I promise to find your dog, I don't owe you money. We don't have a contract, even though you promised to do something, because my offer could only be accepted by performance of an act. Thus, whoever does find the dog and return it to my door, once they perform that act, I am then bound to perform my promise of payment. Now, there are two situations or circumstances we come across that look like a mutual exchange of consideration, but they're actually insufficient in the law. Consideration must be at the time of the contract or in the future. Consideration must be at the time of the contract or in the future. It cannot be something from the past. So there's a rule called the past consideration rule, which means if there is something that's in the past, it is insufficient as consideration, insufficient to form a contract. So you see here, I've added the line, not consideration. And the first one is past consideration. So what's an example of past consideration? Students who attend my class have no contracts with me, but let's imagine that Jeannie is just a phenomenal student. Every time she comes in that classroom, she lifts the class. She's got high energy, great questions. And when she is present, other people are more interested, invigorated. And at the end of the semester, I'm reflecting and I'm thinking, Jeannie was phenomenal. I want to pay her um, for lifting the class, for being so exceptional. And so I email Jeannie and say, thank you so much for your incredible contribution to the educational environment. I'm going to pay you $1,000. And then let's say I don't. Can Jeannie sue me to enforce that contract? Well, the answer is no. We don't have a mutual exchange of consideration. And that is because of the past consideration rule. Uh, remember, consideration must be at the time of contract or in the future. 
When I make a promise to pay money based upon something Jeannie did in the past, it is not binding. It is not enforceable. So in that circumstance, Jeannie has no rights in a court of law to enforce my promise to pay $1,000. The other situation that sometimes looks like consideration but is actually legally insufficient is the pre-existing duty rule. So what's an example of a pre-existing duty? Let's imagine that I coach a little league baseball team. And let's say that the season starts in April. My contract says I will coach the entire season, playoffs, anything, um, for $30,000. And I plan on some vacation time uh, in July and August. Um, but then my team is phenomenal and we just cannot lose. And we end up going all the way and qualifying for the World Series. But I have plans. You know, I did not think they were going to be that good. And so I tell my team, look, I'm not going to coach unless you pay me $10,000 extra. And the team agrees. Is that promise to pay $10,000 extra enforceable? The answer is no, because of the pre-existing duty rule. Let's go back and think about my original contract. I promised to coach the season, including playoffs. Even though I did not anticipate that we would make it all the way, I am bound to perform. I cannot unilaterally, that means one side, renegotiate the terms of the contract. I already committed to coach the season. I cannot now be a holdout unless I get more money. The team's agreement to pay me the extra money is not enforceable in a court.